the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. And let me give you the belief systems for victory. The mentality of a victor. Be ready to write. Number one, the first belief system that you must adopt to walk in victory. The first belief system is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Please write. Let's hurry up. We have a lot to cover up and God will grant us grace. Belief system number one that turns any believer to a sign and a wonder is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Knowing that Jesus died for you is not enough. You must understand the implication of his death, his burial, his resurrection. For therein lies your victory as a believer. Ephesians 4, 2, 4 and 6. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. It says, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. Everybody say together with Christ. One more time. Say together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved, verse 6, and had raised us up together. The key word is together. And made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ the consciousness of your positional advantage and Ephesians 1 from verse 20 to 23 tells us the implication of being in that position which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places verse 21 far above let's list them number one principality number two power number three might number four dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come 22 it says and hath put all things under his feet say all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church 23 which is his body the church is his body Every authority that was given to the head was also given to the body. The Bible says the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Say your positional advantage. It's a revelation and it's a consciousness that must come upon you. That although you walk in the earth, the Bible says you have been exalted. There is a seat of authority that where Jesus sat in victory, that is where you sit. Now, it's not just Pentecostal gibberish. The Bible says it and let God be true and all men liars. It is not when you are translated and you experience a great life that you believe it. It is believing it that transits you. This reality is not a physical reality. It is first a spiritual reality. At the point of believing this, nothing in your life will show like this is true. But your assignment is to believe it. I'm sharing with you my mentality. A position advantage. The will cut a far above mentality. A far above mentality far above mentality you exempt yourself from the wickedness the vicissitudes of life that you know that i am victorious regardless what happens i am victorious belief system number one is an understanding of your positional advantage in christ can we continue number two the second belief system that programs victory in the believer's life is the consciousness of your oneness with Christ the consciousness of your oneness with Christ please write it first Corinthians 6 and verse 17 NIV we read that already it says that he that is in union with Christ first Corinthians 6 17 it says that he is one spirit with him he who unites himself with the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, 
be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give us Amplified of Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Look at what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. You are united with him. Whatever flows from him flows to you and through you to your world. You are united with him. The consciousness of your oneness. Listen, how do you stand and make declarations? These are your hands. The same hands you had as a baby. What suddenly changed in the hands that you lay it on someone and then the person gets healed? What changed? It is a consciousness. What changed? The same mouth that you used to take breast milk as a baby. The same mouth that you used to eat all your life. The same mouth you used to look for trouble with. What suddenly changed that you make a declaration in the name of Jesus, let doors be opened. And people say amen and return with testimonies. What changed? The same brain that you have that you went to class, you forgot a lot of things. Now you can stand and then be telling someone something about his life when you were not there. What changed? The consciousness of your oneness. The consciousness. The Bible says you are hidden with Christ and Christ in God. Now it's a process to get that consciousness to be crystallized, but that you are responsible for beginning that journey. You must plant that consciousness in you. Hallelujah. Is someone listening? The victor's mindset, number two. The consciousness of your oneness. Your oneness with Christ. Your oneness with Christ. Everything that answers to Jesus must answer to me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus went to every land and there was a structure for him to rise. So it will be with me. Jesus said, as I was or as I am. He said that, so are you now. So are you now. As he was, as he walked upon the earth, he says, so are you. Can you imagine that? You watch the life of Jesus and see the dexterity, the excellence that emanated from his life. And yet many believers who claim to be one with him were not manifesting the possibilities that come with that oneness. Not because the statement is untrue, but because we have not established that consciousness. Number three. What is the third belief system for victory in the kingdom? Are you ready? Your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, philosophies, and ideas. Let me take it again. Your life, this is the third mindset you must have. That your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Your life will eventually, ladies and gentlemen, be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. That means the quality of your life or otherwise, first from a spiritual standpoint, then spilling over to every area of your life will be a merciless reflection of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Something about God you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about Satan you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about men you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Your life is not just dependent on your job. Your life is not just dependent on government. Your life is not just dependent on relatives or situations and circumstances. Many of us are blaming the wrong things. The real factor that controls the quality of your life, believe me, is your beliefs, your philosophies, your ideas. Is someone learning? Number four. Are you ready for the fourth belief system? Without consistent decisions and actions, comma, without consistent decisions and actions, comma, Life and destiny remains stagnant. Without consistent decisions and actions, 
please if you're writing underline decisions underline actions without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remains stagnant that means your pace in life is at the mercy of the consistency of your decisions and your actions great decisions great actions and then great actualization of destiny no decision no action and your destiny remains deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 and 20 without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remain stagnant how true and powerful this is i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death is that in your bible i have set before you blessing and cursing therefore choose life not wish life choose life that both you and thy seed may live verse 20 that thou mayest love the lord thy god this is the implication of choosing life that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days and that thou mayest dwell in the land which the lord swear to your fathers to abraham to isaac to jacob to give them please listen to me ladies and gentlemen one day ego better is not a wise approach to life my life and your life today is a product of your decisions a decision is not a wish a wish is a blind desire a decision is an intentional wish backed up by the willingness to pay whatever price to make it happen so there is a difference between a wish many people are wishing not deciding I wish to move from here to here that is a wish I decide to move from here to here means one I have placed that desire but together with that desire I am willing to pay whatever price in righteousness to get there I want the anointing that is a wish I want to know scripture that is a wish I want to be a great man that is a wish those are not decisions until you include the responsibility factor in your desires they are still wishes and many believers respectfully speaking preachers politicians people aspiring to be great it does not matter what kind of prophecy is on your head if you do not sustain the discipline to decide and then to act so if i have two people here one is wishing for a great life I wish I will be great. In fact, I desire greatness. I desire power. I desire to be mightily used by God. Another person right from his or her lowly estate is making that decision. And then the person now takes a step further to honor that decision. There is always action that must honor your decisions for destiny to move. Are we together? I like the way this man is playing his keyboard. I like the way this man is playing his drum. That is a desire. I'm sure one day I'll become like the drummer. You are, you are just wishing. The day you decide to be a drummer, you say, I have decided. What does it take? And the easiest way is to meet those who are already in, they are living the reality of your desire. Sir, what did you do to get this he will tell you are you ready okay there is a school then you submit yourself to it are we together someone says i want power okay you've been saying it from 2018 2019 oh more power 2020 more power someone will say honestly i desire power because the power is required to actualize destiny and to birth the purposes of God in the lives of people. And the person goes to find out how. What are the keys that control genuine power? When that person becomes empowered, the talkative is still there wishing. There are many people who want to be rich. I want to be rich. <laughs> no. Another person will sit down and get tired and say i'm tired of stagnation and the limitations that come from it in the name of jesus the bible gives me the, all the allowance to attain unto wealth and abundance what does it take that person will get up and make a decision 
Let me show you how destiny moves. From this day, I decide that I will not sleep until I spend at least one hour every day studying a book on wealth and abundance, following a program that helps me. That is someone who has decided. Someone who wants to become a great man of God. I will, I will not rest until I spend one day at least praying for one or two hours. One hour studying videos and scripture. It may not look like all the time, but the person has started. Let me tell you the one who will become. The one who is taking action. Destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy. Let me repeat. Destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy. That means if nobody ever has a chance to prophesy to your life, but you can take the prophecy of scripture and believe it and make decisions out of it and act, I guarantee you no power in existence will stop you from manifesting. Versus somebody who says amen and even places oil on your head and you go back and not act. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. A good warfare. Someone met me and said, one of the father of faith laid hands on me. And from that day, my life never became the same. He was just communicating his observation. I looked at him. I said, you are right. But you need to go and see what I did with that laying on of hands. Don't you think that I just jumped and said, oh, hands have come upon me. No. You go back and do something with it. Hallelujah. Apostle God is prospering koinonia. Growing in leaps and bounds. I agree. But you go back and see the back end of what happens. You know how much time it takes to prepare what you are hearing now? The kind of research. I hope you know that it's not just scripture that brings this information. You are going to consult references with intelligence. It takes time. It's not like there is a book that has all the ideas for you. You piece them together by sitting down. When others are sleeping, you are awake and God is honoring the actions and moving your destiny forward. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare that from today, I make quality decisions and I take quality actions. There are many of you here, I will build, I will build, I will build. You said that when land was 10 million and you had 30 million in your account, I will build. While you were saying that somebody was in 100 level, the person finished and took a step of faith. He said, all I have is 1 million. I will go and meet the owner of the estate and say in the name of Jesus, show me favor. Who will experience favor of the two? And he meets that man and he says, you're a young man. You seem to be very ambitious. Okay, come, I will help you. Take half plot of land and the person laughs whereas the person who does not have anything will say half plot is too small can't you build there and rent it out later on decisions many have not decided to be great many have not decided to be serious you have not decided to make your prayer life a priority do you know something about the human will the anointing of God will always move the direction of your true decisions that when you make up your mind and say from this day forward. Hallelujah. Everybody say decisions. Say actions. I want you right now while you are watching me. Write three things. That you will decide upon. And you will take immediate action by the spirit. And not stop till you see results. As God puts it in your heart. For some of you is building. For some of you, it's your health. For some of you, it's re-engineering your entire life. For some of you, you need to put your ministry or your life in order. Please write it by the Spirit. This is why you came to church. Don't assume. I am a father, but my wife has been the one taking care of the family. It started when I lost my job in 2015. Thank you, sir. With all due respect, the Bible says any man that cannot take care of his family, that, that time is too long for you to remain in that state. Therefore, make a decision that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will rise to my responsibility as a father. I've been having a pain in my body. I said, I will go to the hospital one day. It's like the pain is increasing. You know? Something is swelling around my stomach. Um, I'm sure one day, maybe miracle service November, I will come. No. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. 
let's hurry up is someone getting a new mindset so number one mindset is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ number two your oneness with Christ number three that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs your philosophies and your ideas Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant. Are you ready for number five? Number five is a very, con is a very consoling orientation that you must have. Challenges are not unusual and can always be surmounted. Please write. This is the fifth belief system that programs you for victory. Challenges are not unusual at all and can always be surmounted psalm 34 19. psalm 34 19. many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of how many all look at me when you when you face challenges on your path to destiny your path to ministry your path to knowing god do not sit back and pretend as though it was something that was lack of faith there are many times challenges are proof that you are moving forward if you are not driving a car it does not enter any pothole if you are not driving a car you will never face traffic a car that is stagnant and not moving does not have any challenge am i am i am i talking to you Yes. Many of you, the challenges that you face on the way is proof that there is motion happening in your life. And every time you face challenges, rather than pretending around it, hiding it, and wasting time, confront it headlong and be victorious over it, jump that hurdle and keep moving. Okay? You started a business and the business crashed. You made a mistake and gave your money to 419ers. For how long are you going to cry? Use the money you lost as your school fees in the school of wisdom. You see, the thing about the school of wisdom is the moment you graduate, your school fees is given back to you, no matter how much you spend. Listen, I want you to believe what I am telling you. Anything that comes as a loss while learning, convert it to your school fees in the school of wisdom. There's no time. Now I know better. Now I can learn better. Let me reposition myself. There are people today, when you ask them why their lives are like that, they will say, in 1991, I was a pastor. This pastor thing you are doing, we did it all. Something, rain came and washed our church. And then when that happened, Ambrobas came and stole my car and my Bible. Is that why till today, 2023, you are not rising? Is that a valid excuse? Whereas in that same journey, there are people when they started, they lost their father, they lost their mother, they lost their loved ones, they lost whatever it is. In the midst of it, they said, I will wear it destiny till I become. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have money to go for the conference, but I must find a way to follow it. Thank God for internet. Please. Let me meet a friend and plead with him. I'm on my way becoming. I should have been at a conference. I don't have the money. Can you help me with 2,000 Naira? Let me try and get, you know, materials from that conference and I will listen to. That is the, the determination. Listen, challenges, I repeat, are not unusual. You are not just because people don't tell you their challenges. Ah, this man is so easy. Things just happen like that. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we together? Challenges are not unusual. The Bible says in, sec in 2 Corinthians 2.14, please give it to us. I hope God is speaking to someone. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Is that in your Bible? And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. If you had seen us the first time we held crusade, the first time when we organized a crusade, if they ever told you that this is what this ministry will become, you will not imagine it. Imagine going for a crusade and you do not even have money to pay the place where people will stay. You heard the story. We hired sound people from Kaduna. And you can imagine owing and shouting on a crusade ground. Jesus heals. 
Jesus delivers. And the people you are owing are well, after you finish all that miracle. And you know the thing with people, they come and receive and go and leave you. The God that sent you and brought you, let him vindicate you. Hmm. Apostle, but I started a church. I was so vibrant in my vision. I saw a thousand people. First service, only me and my wife. My, fr my friend, continue. I encourage you in the Lord, continue continue provided is God that led you but apostle how, how all the money that I spend publicizing is not publicity that brings men it's a track record in the spirit you continue God is giving you a beautiful story you are trying to rob yourself of pray together with your wife let her be the choir director you are the preacher if you drop offering she will count it think of how beautiful that story will be when God makes your ministry global Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Challenges are not unusual. Apostle God gave me a word that in three months I'm going to build my house. Now it's one year my house was not built. Accept it as a deficiency in your hearing. That was not God. Just see that you are a student in the school of hearing. You are growing. Instead of doing and say, God, but you said this. Don't make a fool of your understanding. Just say, I can hear God better. Forgive yourself for not hearing well and now start hearing well. And, and if you cannot hear well, borrow the ears of those who have, through faith and patience, have developed hearing that works. You can borrow the ears of others while your own is being trained. Is someone learning? I'm doing something to your mind today. You will leave this place a sign and a wonder. Believe me. Challenges are not unusual. Apostle, do you know you are just speaking about my case? I trekked from home to come here. We have trekked before. This man you are seeing, I trekked. So it is not, um, it, don't, it's not even an affliction. It's just the law of seasons. Don't, it's not an affliction at all. Hallelujah. That's too small to be called an affliction. The devil will not afflict you with that cheap thing. If the devil wants to afflict you, you will bring something that is serious. Trek with honor. Shabako Siata, and you are trekking for koinonia and while you are saying that you are saying this is a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ you will trek and sit outside and one day light from heaven will land on your head and from that place you will rise to become a champion and people will see your life and say you are so lucky then tell them sit down let me tell you how luck works that one day I trek with no food apostle how about me who has not eaten it's so sad God will raise comfort for you. But my friend, do not leave your training because of that. Don't call things problems. Call them challenges. Do you believe what, what I'm saying? Apostle, I was invited for a meeting. I prayed and fasted. When I got there, I even forgot the anchor scripture. And I preached all kinds of things. Nobody was looking at, I mean, while they were looking at me, I thought I did something wrong. I didn't know that I was not making sense. I was just, my sermons, I was preaching. The goal was to preach on faith. I ended up preaching on something else. Don't worry. Make your mistakes with honor. That will become your testimony. It's a ladder you are rising upon. Hallelujah. Run away from people who never met challenges on their path to greatness. You are standing before a risk, a big risk. Challenges qualify people to be able to mentor and raise others. We teach people from pain, not just victory. Victory is what brings people, but pain is what... Let no man trouble me. Is it not in your Bible? For I bear in my body. Before you listen to people, tell them, show me your scars. A testament of endurance. A testament... Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything right? Till today with what I know, I know I did everything right. It was just not the season for manifestation nothing there was nothing wrong as far as i know sincerely so you are saying apostle i've done everything right everything you are saying is what i'm doing my brother continue if the cloud be full of rain they empty themselves continue the giving man of god keep praying 
keep praying apostle but should i start ministry because there's the pressure even though the voice of god has not come stay there and remain the ones i've trained i've started ministry you stay there the blueprint of your destiny is not the same but the day his voice comes, it will come with majesty and it will lift you and compensate you for your obedience. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hmm. Number six. <laughs> Are you ready? Belief system number six. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. The sixth mindset you must have, this world, write it down please, is a world of men. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. If you do not sustain this mindset, respectfully speaking, you will fail in patterns. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships psalm 115 and verse 6 let's hurry up psalm 116 and 15 and verse 6 verse 16 i meant to say psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the lords read with me the remaining part please but the earth has he given to the children of men one more time but the earth has he given to the children of men. The earth, as far as the activities within the cosmos is concerned, I have told you, destiny actualization is men dependent, not only God dependent. When you are functioning in the realm of the spirit, you do not need men. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. You want to walk in victory. You must understand the dynamics of relationships as far as as actualizing destiny is concerned. This was the tragedy of the man at the pool of Bethesda. John 5, 6 and 7. Jesus comes to the man and he saw him there and knowing he had been there a long time, said unto him, will thou be made whole? Hear the man's reply, 7. The impotent man answered and said, I have no man. In other words, I did not invest in relationships. It is not because the water cannot heal. It says, when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another who has relationships will step in before me. Relationships are very powerful. This world is a world of men. It's a revelation that when I caught, changed my life. When I pray to God, I also pray to him to touch men. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The house that you are trusting God for is not in heaven. It's in the earth. The keys are in somebody's hand right now. The job that you are trusting God for, the assignment of God as the father of spirit is to manipulate the hearts of men to be ready to work his purposes in your life. Your assignment is to use the wisdom of relationships to connect. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationship, plants and animals. When I, I, I was doing a study some time ago, when you study um, microbiology and I, I believe even biochemistry, you see the way a, a single cell begins to break itself in rapid succession until it becomes a full-grown human. It's a miracle, a, a marvelous miracle. That means when you are rejecting that little cell, you are rejecting a human being. Are we together now? This is how it is. A line, watch this now, a line is simply a connection between two points. Mathematics and uh, geometry teaches us, am I right? You cannot call a point a line. For you to have a line, you must have two points, any point at all, and then you connect them. So what you call a line is simply two points agreeing to be together. That's what you call a line. You alone will never be able to make any progress, but in connection to someone else. And if you do not know how to respond to that someone else, you can miss destiny. If Jesus did not know how to connect to John the Baptist, he would have missed destiny. If Jesus did not know how to connect to the disciples, he would have missed the continuation of the gospel after his ascension. 
relationships are very important belief system number six this world is a world of men and therefore advancement of any sort is based on relationships we're almost there let me give you seven please go back and study this I have handed to someone in this service the keys to the prayers that you have been praying Lord why is my life like this are you ready for for number seven who you become as you walk with God please write who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means your transformation is greater than your acquisition who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means when you probe the great their, their greatest sense of worth comes from who they have become not what they have acquired when you begin to acquire things chances are excellent that your mind shifts from your transformation to enjoy the things that you have cars houses and all kinds of privileges but as you walk the school of the wise and as you walk the path of victory the victor's path you will know that who you become is more important than what you acquire on the way what you acquire can come and go but who you become remains with you forever the seventh mindset that you must have your becoming is greater than your doing greater than your having most people are interested in having before becoming they want to be billionaires they want to be anointed men and women but they are interested in the anointing not God are you seeing that now I hope you know that interest in the anointing minus God is idolatry your faith and your desire is on the oil not the relationship who you become is greater than what you acquire many years ago I studied this and it did not make sense to me how will you tell me who I am becoming is greater than what I have listen to me every time you have something that does not match your becoming it will leave your life I promise you it will leave your life it is a law that is the reason why you find out that people can inherit physical estates or inherit physical things that is inconsistent with their transformation eventually they will lose it through a series of inexplainable events who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire what you acquire on the way what you acquire from God is greater is of lesser value than who you become can I give you number eight write this down everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose everything in your life this is the mentality of the victor everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose everything in your life only becomes truly valuable when it is connected to purpose please write and look up let me explain that and then I give you the last I hope God has spoken to you today that means nothing in itself is truly valuable it is only valuable to you relative to your perception eventually you will find out that what you admired and were happy about will no longer interest you what makes things indefinitely valuable is their ability to serve purpose not the things themselves for instance your certificate remember the first day you collected it you were jumping up and down now you've not seen it for years you don't even know where it is honestly and quite honestly many do not care do you know why because until it is connected to purpose in itself it will not profit you another example strangely so is the car that you buy you can buy that car imagine you buy a car you cannot drive and there's nobody to drive you eventually what was a blessing will annoy you 
because it is not serving purpose. The, the goal of that car is that it's able to move you to help you achieve your goals. But imagine with me that you buy a car, for instance, and someone puts it, uh, you know, to, to the drive Uber or Bolt with it for you, and something is coming with it, and you are using it to pay the school fees of your children. You see that that car becomes valuable because it is helping you serve a bigger purpose. Every time you come to God and say, give me, the question you hear from heaven is for what give me power reply for what let me make a name for myself make reference to Genesis 11 I don't waste that kind of thing God will tell you I don't waste time on purposeless things Nimrod Kush said let us build a city and make a name for ourselves and God said that is not it Lord give me wisdom and understanding heart Solomon for what I am young and you have given me leadership over a great people who but you is able to lead them give me an understanding heart that I may lead them and guide them in discretion and God said you qualify I will not only give you an understanding heart I will give you riches wealth and honor like no one has had listen to me everything you have in your life that cannot be connected to purpose will not only frustrate you but can be used as a tool by the devil to destroy you even if it is God that gave you beauty without purpose can be converted to a tool of destruction for both you and others intellect without there's what we call evil genius is that true people who God gave intelligence but because it was not connected to divine purpose can be used by the devil for your destruction you watch how Satan used things that God gave men to destroy them Samson was given an unusual ability to be strong but he thought it was just strength he did not know what that strength was supposed to be for it was supposed to be that by his strength he will become a judge over Israel everybody say purpose one more time can I tell you listen ladies and gentlemen most people do not know the importance of purpose they just come and they say, well I just want money and you keep acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring then you make the mistake of the rich fool you now build banks in this case a bank account snatch them and say my soul find rest and all of a sudden they diagnose respectfully speaking that there is some sickness somewhere and you find out that money cannot attend to it again and they say the man has two weeks to leave and now there are billions stacked there he hid it from his wife hid it from his children hid it from himself did not spend it the kingdom was not blessed by it it was kept there wealth without purpose make up your mind today that everything God gives you you are going to connect it to divine purpose Lord why did you give me this lovely voice there are many of you who are singing here who when you hear the worship team sing you smile because something there is a connection God gave you a wonderful voice you should be singing his praises to the nations but you are there just wondering I'm sure God one day my own is that I want to marry that's my own and God is saying for what <laughs> you see I said marriage and I'm seeing people smile <laughs> and now you are using God as a ladder to quickly get married at least let me come to church I know that in church who knows what God can do <laughs> are we together all my own is to get I just want a job that's my own I want to move from this one room to a three-bedroom flat why all my friends are living in duplexes and God says nonsense that's too small a reason you can fast from the lens of that lost you will not get the hand of God let me tell you something one secret to answer prayer is connect your desires to divine purpose let me repeat connect your desires to divine purpose Lord give me a husband give me a wife you are not speaking his language for what are we together Lord give me money I want money and you are shouting for five minutes all God is hearing is money money I said calm down this thing is the lost is is lost it's not prayer what do you want the money for Lord I've suffered are you not seeing mm -mm. I've suffered is not an answer I can raise somebody to help you but money will not touch your hand when you have a need he will give you will you agree no I want it in my hands 
and God says for what but now watch this as funny as this is I hope you are learning father I have learned by revelation and through the ministry of the teaching priest that financial resources are important for my living a comfortable life important for participating in your kingdom advance agenda Lord I am available that one prayer I can tell you expect a reply kingdom driven prayers are the kinds of prayers that receive answers lost driven prayers is simply carnality using spirituality to meet its need hallelujah we pray competitive prayers Lord you have given this person this lady that came when when now I'm here oh. mm -mm. it's amazing you just listen to the prayer of Christians especially when they're alone and you just be God yourself and be listening imagine that that prayer is coming to your throne and just hear what the people are saying and then at the end we end it with in Jesus mighty name we have prayed his name is mighty no doubt but that thing you have said needs editing father I'm tired of not being anointed the other day I said let the power of God will move now and nobody fell and God says what for what exactly what does the falling do to you it's because people are not falling that they are not inviting me I have, I, by now my life would have been everything in life is only truly valuable when it is connected to purpose in John 18 and verse 37 John 18 37 give it to us please John 18 37 Pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king then Jesus answered thou sayest that I am a king to this end did you see it now to this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness to the truth everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice in other words Jesus said I do not have any personal agenda on my own I am here to bear witness to the truth I am here to bear witness to the truth for as long as John the Baptist was walking in purpose nobody could kill him when the assignment was done he said himself that I may decrease that he might increase he now went into doing things that were not connected to purpose and it landed him in prison offense multiplied his tragedy and he was beheaded not a wise way for someone who had worked with God everything I desire in my life I always ask my question I ask this question and and from the depth of my heart how does this that I want serve the purposes of the kingdom I'm giving you a very superior spiritual orientation it is not that God cannot lift you father give me a global ministry the question is for what Lord raise me like Esther bring a Hazarus to come and marry me it's not that God cannot bring a Hazarus but for what I just want the joy of being queen and God said ask Vashti that's exactly how she was thinking and that's why she left the palace but I realized that the salvation of the Jews from her man and all those who are the enemies of God's process is depending on me therefore take me to the palace with speed God will take you there believe what I'm telling you you find people's prayer answered to the degree to which it is connected to kingdom lost driven prayer whether in secret or in the open will always end you in destruction competitive prayer that one you just console yourself that you are praying you know our idea of winning on earth is that only one person must win because that is how we have been educated to believe winning so you outshine to win but in the kingdom all can be winners because winning is with respect to the will of God not with respect to who you rise above in our secular academic program you are only called a winner when you bring others down and you stand alone but in the kingdom you are not a winner when you bring others down you are a winner to the degree to which your life fulfills the will and the purposes of God is someone learning now let me give you the last and we'll wrap up for today the last is a very major point a major mind construct idea mind construct idea listen carefully everything in your life 
Okay, verse, okay, number nine now. The only real assets you have are God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Please write. The only real assets that you have in this life are God, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset. It is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint. From the standpoint of the spirit, eternity, and destiny, in fact. Your only real assets, the only real assets you have, I repeat, are number one, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Make reference to my teaching, What Seekest Thou? I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is God's idea of fulfillment. I take number nine again. The only real assets that you have are your relationship with God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Jeremiah chapter 9 from 23 and 24. Let's find something somewhere to pray now. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, Koinonia, please listen. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The real asset of the believer is the wealth of your knowing God. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Your real asset is your relationship with Jesus, John 14 27 John 14 27 peace shalom I live with you my peace give I unto you not as the world giveth give I to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid please look at me no matter what you have in this life and no matter your level of achievement and accomplishment ask anybody who has lived long enough upon this earth does not matter what field and frankly speaking does not even matter whether he's a christian or not you just meet someone who has experienced the blessing of longevity and ask them what things from your experience among the many things you feel are really valuable they will tell you peace the highest definition of success for me is peace beyond progress peace when people die you never say rest in progress you never say rest in investments you never say rest on top of your assets you say rest in peace so peace is a gift that even a dying man can go with nobody can carry his land out of the earth nobody can carry his certificate out of the earth nobody can carry you cannot carry your office out of the earth no matter how beautiful how handsome a few hours after death and the person is disshaped in a way beyond recognition days after decay sets in and that's the end of it all that is left after a long time is the skeletal frame of that person all the beauty and all the glamour fades literally from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return but let me tell you three things that you can take out of this life you cannot take land therefore don't let land replace your relationship with god don't let land re replace your peace and your fulfillment all these three things i am mentioning you can take them out of this earth number one your relationship with jesus can be transported beyond this realm that will be the basis of your being with him when all is said and done number two is your peace can i tell you if you even live without peace it already suggests to you where you are going to am i right on that yes sir because jesus is called the prince 
of peace. There are people who do not care whether they have peace. Listen, I say this as I wrap up and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. I have met very wealthy people who have lost peace for money. They traded peace for money. Medical doctors here will tell you there are people who have a lot of money, estates, and, and I'm not against prosperity, but they cannot find peace. There are men of God, respectfully speaking, they are so obsessed about advancement in ministry that they lose their peace. There are many who are so obsessed about their reputation, they would rather their peace go away and preserve their reputation. No. In order of priority, the greatest assets you will truly have in your life this is the mentality of the victor your relationship with jesus your peace and your fulfillment i have had the honor of praying for people some of them minutes before their transition and i have seen people laugh as they leave you know how people will say ah i'm going mm -mm. they were not even desirous of prayer because all has been put in place they put everything in place their will they live useful lives some of them have had the honor of having their children around them one of my dear pastor friends in Kenya I think one time when his father was about transiting in glory I had the honor of seeing the father lovely family that man even in his old age and in his health state he still went to church and when it was his final moments the family members gathered around him like this what a beautiful way to transit gathered they sang hymns they sang songs they did everything and then the wife went into the kitchen their mother and when she came out he smiled at her one last time and transited to heaven versus hold on let me paint another picture versus the person who sits down you've cheated people you've lived a wicked life you refuse to receive jesus as your lord and savior downplayed everything spirituality spent your life looking for money spent your life making ends meet and finally you are told you are about to go i present to you two people two people at the end of their lives there are people today there are all kinds of arguments about their properties arguments about their estates they've gone they've long gone long gone long gone if Jesus comes and meets us while working then hallelujah to him we transit in glory and grace but if he stays long enough for us to finish our assignment and we enjoy length of days because I hope you know the purpose of long life is not fear of death. Hey, look at me. I hope you know that the purpose of long life is not fear of death. I hope you are not offended. The purpose of long life is not fear of death. If you are afraid of death, what you need is Jesus, not long life. <laughs> you will not die, don't worry. Am I not the one who speaks over you? You will not die but the purpose of long life hear me the purpose of long life is not to manage the fear of death that's not a wise way to live it's not a victorious way to live did the bible not say for for me to live is christ and he caused death gain is it not profit that made you go for business <laughs> and now he says there is another kind of profit when you transit are we together most people cannot talk about death as I'm saying like this. Oh, oh, Apostle, you are talking like this. Are you? I'm not going anywhere. Look, you don't know, you don't know my agreement with God. Don't, don't listen. Me and God, we are not stupid people. I'm not serving God for nothing. So when I talk like this, it is my priestly duty to you. Don't think these are some finals. You will see me next week, next year. I'm, I'm here. I'm, listen, I'm only teaching you the mentality of the victor. Are we together? If you cannot talk like this, when I make the altar call, come and stand here. Because that, listen, listen, it's a very, if you do not have the confidence, if you fear death so much, it's because you do not know Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Not to be on a journey going, to be present with him. What then is the excellency of saying it is finished? That way you can, you can smile at life. Listen, for all those who are elderly here and are listening, 
The truth is, if Christ tarries all of us, that queue, we're going to join it and transit. So let me advise every person here, I hate to be, I'm not bringing bad news, but let me advise every elderly person, elderly here means what, what age do we put elderly? Let's say from 60 and above, sincerely do not fear death. Take the time you have to prepare your life with honor that if Christ tarries, you can transit with joy. That I have raised children that love the Lord. I have spent my life serving the purposes of God. And even if it is one year left, do it with honor. Let the nobility of that one year swallow up the remaining years of wastage. If you cannot pray, you can give. If you cannot give, you can send men. There are people as they die, they remember the buses they provided for people to come to church. They remembered televisions that they set up for people to hear the gospel. It is the reason why many of us are rejoicing why we are serving God. Because if I die today, you've heard me say it, it's only that I did not finish my assignment. Or, uh, but th that is, I'm just giving you an, an, a reason. I'm saying if I die today, that may be my only challenge. But I'm still alive through the teachings that go spread across lives. Look at men like Reinhard Bonke. I was listening to one of his teachings a few days ago. And I said, my God, men who, though they are dead, they are still alive. My, my eternal mentor, Dr. Miles Munro, long dead. But he's still alive today we have become extensions of his legacy when god raised him he saw us in him quit that life of fear and that makes you live a mediocre life spend your life doing the things that matter to be victorious for the kingdom i present to you the mentality of a victor you cannot have this mindset and be defeated in life you cannot have this series of mindsets. I do not believe that is all you need to learn. But I tell you, this is a rich capture. This has come from the study of scripture. This has come, respectfully speaking, from listening to people who have made marks in the sands of time, in ministry, in business, in life. You walk this path and watch the beauty and glory that emanates from your life. My call for you, therefore, is not just to sit down and say, I had a wonderful service, but to go back, be a student of scripture, match these things against your life. I'm 20 years now, I'm 30 years now, I'm 40 years now, I'm 50 years now, I'm 80 years now, I'm 90 years now. It does not matter. The unit of destiny is time. And the wise know that you can waste time, you can spend time, and you can invest in time hallelujah have you been blessed tonight this is my mentality believe me when I tell you when I wake up in the morning this is it when I say I can never be a failure it is not a blind Pentecostal confession I have surrounded my life with these thoughts they continue to grow in me perpetually you have this mentality listen to this message again Get these principles, write them, listen to them, pray them, believe them, develop on them, and return back a few months, a few weeks, a few years, and say, Apostle, thank you for not hiding this truth. Thank God I came for Koinonia today. I have shown you the roadmap out of a life of mediocrity. I've shown you the roadmap out of a life of, you do business without this mindset, it will lead to failure. Get a job without this mindset, it will lead to failure. Do ministry without this mindset, it will lead to failure. Run a family without this mindset, it will lead to failure. But don't do any other thing and get this mindset. It will force you into an action that will turn you into a victor. Please rise up on your feet. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Holy God's fire!